My, <laughs> my battery just died. Hey guys, PC here. Today I'm going to be talking about what it's like to attend university in Japan. I feel like there's not really a lot of information out there about what it's like to be an international student and I'm really hoping that this video is helpful to anyone who's looking into attending university in Japan. Personally, I think I can relate most to people who grew up in Japan and went to an international school their whole lives but is deciding to stay in Japan for university. Please do bear in mind that not everyone's experience is going to be the same and so in this video I'll just be sharing some of the things that I have experienced as an international student living in Tokyo. So I currently attend ICU, which stands for International Christian University. It's so funny, when I first started looking up things about ICU, literally the only things that would come up on Google were the intensive care unit. Anyway, it's a relatively small international school in Tokyo. There are only about 3,000 students compared to other universities, especially in the states that's relatively small. I think one thing that also sort of caught me off guard is it's not necessarily that religious. The school was initially established by Christians and I think it was founded on Christian principles, but you really only have to take one Christianity class to be able to graduate, but you can choose to be as involved as you want to be. The first thing that I probably want to address is, is ICU really an international or bilingual community? My answer to that is yes and no. Yes, because you meet so many different kinds of people there. There are people who are exchange students from abroad. They may be coming for a full year or just staying for a term. There are many, many students and staff, people who work at the office who are bilingual. They speak both English and Japanese. Actually, most of the professors there do speak both English and Japanese really well. Sometimes, because there are people coming from countries all over the world, you'll hear them talking to each other in different languages. You'll hear some French, Spanish, Filipino. Yeah, it's really interesting. My Tagalog actually improved when I began attending ICU because I made so many Filipino friends. There, there are so many people from different backgrounds, culturally. It fe almost feels like you're not in Japan. But at the same time, the university is still a university in Japan. And so the system, for example, registration, scholarships, applying for anything, the procedures that they have, it's very, very Japanese. What I mean by that is in Japan, things are very set. I feel like in more Western settings, there's more leniency and flexibility about due dates. Like sometimes they'll stretch a little to accommodate you if you weren't able to submit something on time. In Japan, things just don't work that way. That's just Japan. It's not the university, it's just Japan, and I feel like that culture sort of has seeped through the university itself. The system itself is actually pretty Japanese. The structure of the classes, the character of the school, it's pretty Japanese. Most people on campus are speaking Japanese. There are certain areas of campus, for example, the dining hall, the bookstore, the cafe, where they only speak Japanese. So you do have to be able to communicate to a certain degree, but it's, it's not, I mean, it's like ordering food. I had a bit of a culture shock when I first got into ICU because I didn't realize how Japanese it would be. As somebody who didn't speak Japanese very well, I was not really confident in communicating with other people. I had a really difficult time sort of adjusting to that. For somebody who grew up in an international school her whole life, the system was just completely different. For a university in Japan, I would say it is pretty international. Obviously, there are just certain aspects of culture that you can't really take away considering it's a university in Japan. Okay, enough of that. Next point, people often ask if classes are in English or in Japanese? The answer is they're in both. Sometimes they're in English entirely, sometimes they're in Japanese. You can have the same class offered in two different languages at different times and different terms. What's really great about that is if students can take the course in whatever language they're most comfortable communicating in. Sometimes though, there are classes that are only offered in a certain language, so it'll only be offered in either English or in Japanese, and you have to submit all the materials in whatever language that the course is registered under. That kind of sucks sometimes because there were times when I wanted to take a certain class but it was in Japanese and I don't think I would have been able to pass if I had taken the course. There's also sort of that disadvantage. However, there are also classes that are taught in both English and Japanese. Either the professor will be bilingual, sometimes they even lecture in both English and Japanese, or they will lecture in one or the other language and will allow the students to submit the assignments in whatever language they're most comfortable writing or presenting it. Those classes are really helpful because I came in as an international student. I have to take classes in Japanese in order to graduate. Instead of taking classes in just Japanese, I try to take classes under professors 
lecture in Japanese but will allow you to submit the materials in English. Classes at ICU are really interesting because again you meet so many different people. As a student who matriculated in September, I'll be in classes with students who matriculated in April. Those tend to be the Japanese students who come from Japanese institutions. You'll be in classes with some graduate students as well. There are a lot of classes where you'll come across exchange students or students who come from abroad. That diversity is really nice. That's something I really appreciate about my classes. So the Japanese language program also called the JLP for short. Those classes are some of the most, I feel like they're the, some of the most rigorous classes offered at ICU. Partly because they're required, partly because they really drill the kanji, the grammar, the vocab, everything into you whether you're a Japanese student, a Japanese speaking individual who just needs some brushing up, or an exchange student who's learning Japanese for the first time. I can't stress enough how crazy the Japanese language program is. Crazy in a good way. It's extremely beneficial because personally I improve significantly, but as with any other skill, if you want to be able to learn something, you have to work very, very hard. Obviously, some people don't necessarily like working very hard. <laughs> For anybody who's coming from a different country and is considering ICU, if you really want to learn Japanese and you're considering staying in Japan, for work, ICU might be a good decision to make. I know a senpai, three years older than me, he already graduated. He came as an international student, went through the JLP, now he's working at a Japanese company. It's crazy to think that he learned that much Japanese in the amount of time that he was here. That's definitely possible, but it's really up to you how much you want to take out of it. If you want to do the bare minimum, you can pass, but you won't necessarily get as much as you want out of it. It's still going to be hard, but it's a program that's definitely worthwhile. I could go into more detail about how the system actually works, how they place you in the right Japanese class, but this video might get too long. I'm thinking about making another video about that, just the JLP. If you think I should, comment. Oh my goodness, what am I turning into? But I think that's the JLP is one of ICU's strongest features and that's one of the biggest reasons why I decided to attend it. Majors! Um, if you check the ICU website, they have a list of all the majors that they offer. As with any other university, I feel like ICU offers certain courses that are more well developed than others. One of my majors is international relations and I decided to go into that partly because I really enjoy the classes and I've taken some really great classes from some really great professors but also partly because I feel like it is one of ICU's stronger majors and that's personally why I decided to choose that as one of my majors. On the other hand, I can't really say anything about the maths and the natural sciences because I don't take too many of those classes but I feel like ICU is definitely stronger in the areas of like the humanities, the social sciences. Just speaking from my experience because those are the majority of the classes that I've taken. Again, it does depend on the professors who are coming in to teach those courses. I'm really grateful because I've had, I've run into some really great professors and I've taken their classes. If you're not sure about what you want to major in or what you really want to do in the future, you can just sort of hop around between classes. At least that's what I did the first two years I was at ICU. I took whatever classes were appealing to me or whatever I thought was interesting. It gave me a lot of freedom to eventually decide which classes were the ones that I enjoyed the most and what I eventually wanted to major in. And scholarships. Okay, this is really important. For anybody who will be applying to ICU in the future, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend that you submit your application for the Peace Bell Scholarship with the application for admissions. And the reason for that is the Peace Bell Scholarship is probably the biggest scholarship that you can get from ICU. It offers 1 million yen per year for four years that you're at ICU. I think that's about $10,000. That covers most of your tuition. You have to pay a little bit more, but it does cover most of your tuition. In addition to that, when I was a senior in high school, they hadn't offered this scholarship yet, but there's another scholarship that you can apply for with your admissions application, and they will offer discounted tuition I'm not sure if it's for that first term, but it, everything is on the website. I recommend that you just go for it. Don't worry about, oh, I don't think I'll get it. Just do it. Just apply for it. If you're already applying, it's just a few extra short answer paragraphs. It's really worth applying for, considering you'll get a chance to get that. The Peace Bell Scholarship and the High Endeavor Scholarship. Those scholarships you can only apply for when you apply to get into ICU. After admissions into ICU, you can also apply for some other scholarships. In your third or fourth years, they have what they call the Tuition Reduction Scholarship, and they'll reduce maybe a third. I don't know if it goes up to a half, but at least a third of your tuition. If you need scholarships, there are a lot of other organizations that are 
are willing to offer it, for example, the JICUF. Once you get into ICU, you'll get access to what they call the ICU portal, sort of the website where they give you all the news and offer all the information. Everything is going to be on there. They're going to have information about scholarships from different organizations like JASO. One of the drawbacks to living in Japan is I'm not under a student visa. And so I'm not eligible for some of the scholarships which are only for international students. It's kind of hard to find a category for students like me because there are scholarships for international students and exchange students and there are also some for like Japanese, but I'm not Japanese and I'm not under a student visa. If you go and talk to the office, they're willing to talk to you about some of those things. You can also always get a loan. The loan's extremely helpful because getting a loan from the school itself is going to be much cheaper than getting a loan from a bank or any other institution because the interest is going to be much lower. You know what? Forget what everyone thinks. You decide to go to ICU if you think it's going to fit you and you think it's going to be a good environment for you.